Hey, it's Joe Glines, and I wanted to demonstrate this little script I wrote. Um, basically, I, I sometimes work with very large files, um, and uh, overall I work with a lot of different files, and often I want I don't know, like it, the extension might just say text, txt, but I don't know if it's a tab delimited or CSV file. Um, I'd like to know the headers, but sometimes when these files are large, like this is almost a gig, right? And let's pick a smaller one for now. Yeah, I can open it and look at it and say, oh, okay, this is comma delimited, obviously, here are the headers. But on larger files, it gets um, pretty pretty big of a bummer, right, opening some large files, and, and it might cause other issues. So I wrote this script that I can have running, and um, first let me demonstrate it, and then I'll review quickly some of the code. So I can highlight a file in Explorer, and let's pick a smaller one here. So um, let's sort by size. Here we go. We'll start with the small ones. So um, apparently, I don't know why I have both of these, but um, oh, I, um, so it, um, I can hit a hotkey, and it tells me there's 20,000 lines, and I know that I put that in the name in this one, right? And it asks if I want to display the headers. And I can just say yes, and here are the headers. And also, if I uh, come back into here, and when I hit paste, oh, after I, sorry, I should have put the clipboard there first. It had copied them to the clipboard. It also transposed them, because more often than not, I actually want them this way and not um, just as a header, because I, I, they're not easy to see. So let's do a couple other examples here. Let me just get rid of that one. So here's another. Uh, this one, oh, I should also point out, so see up here in the title? So this says it's a comma delimited, 87,000 rows. And so I don't actually even, I can just say no, I don't want to actually see the headers, right? Um, 59,000, and see how fast it's lightning fast, pops it open. Now these will be on my clipboard. Um, and actually, let me come in here. That just had to do with the order. I should have put this before. Now, regardless of when I hit, when I get to the message box, they're already on my clipboard. That's why it didn't work before. And I don't need that anymore. Close that. Um, but let me give you a couple instances of where these files start. It gets interesting when they get large. And so I played around with it. I used to have a different loop, but I, I switched over to using the file contacts. I'm sorry, the file object. Um, so let's see here. There's 135,000 rows. And I don't know if you can hear me hitting the button, but um, I should have put a timer in here. But I'm going to hit it. And, you know, what is that? About a second and a half. It goes through 82,000 rows. Allows me to, if I want to see the header or not, um, and uh, here's a very tall file. So this one actually is going to take a bit longer. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Um, but there were 9 million rows, right? That's the other, I think I mentioned it, but the, the file object I was running into when it was a, a really big file, I would have out of memory errors. And so doing it this way, and I can just say, hey, there's the first and last name. Um, again, let me let me pick a smaller one. So when I don't know, like here's one that just says text, but up here this one's a tab delimited, and if I pop it open, uh -huh. I, here's a setting I have that just says, hey, do you really want to open that file? So you can see there's tabs in here, right? Um, and that looks like a pretty wide file. So let's see, um, that was here's a very large and wide file. So this one's nearly a gig in size, and let's see how fast it goes. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So about nine seconds, it's a million rows, but this one has a, a lot of fields in it. Um, and it's still it's telling me it's tab delimited. Do I want to see the headers? Yes. There they are. I have them on my clipboard now. Um, so very handy. It Right now I have only have it to look for comma or tab delimited um, headers. It'd be easy to add in some other logic. I was just lazy, and it's r so rare I work with anything else that it just does, it didn't wasn't worth it for me. But let me uh, go th review the code here real quickly. So these are my hotkeys, so I can hit my browser forward, just reload. Uh, but the browser back, which for me is right near my thumb, triggers it uh, in this example. And this first one says, hey, if it only do this, if Explorer is, is the active window, um, and clear the clipboard, send control C. Now, I, I'm using send input, which it just depends on what version of Windows you're using. Um, send input for me is, it works pretty reliably, but you might try send event or um, or just send. I think just send is often the, 
the, the most common way people do stuff. Um, and here I tell it to wait for the clipboard, so I've cleared the clipboard, and now I'm going to wait for a value there. Um, and then basically here's some error checking of, if, if, look, if nothing actually comes back, like if I'm in this window and I hit it and run, it says, hey, you know, you w uh, basically I wasn't in here, and it's going to break and stop running the script. Um, but if it is, it's going to take the clipboard, and when you um, when you hit Control C from Explorer, it copies the path, and it's going to store it in this path variable. And then uh, right here, I say, okay, let's do a file read line, and I'm just going to read the very first line and store it in my header variable, right? And then here is where I do a little bit of counting, and I just did a um, a string replace um, function of saying, hey, replace the comma, replace the tab, but store how many you do it. Um, store, so it's actually, now that I look at it, this is doing two things. So it's giving me the count of how many times it did it, and because I'm replacing, this is where I, I tie the two together. It's like, this is what transposes it, and that's why I put comma trans and tab trans. So this is what inverts it from being the headers this way to going this way, right? So I'm replacing the delimiter with um, the line return and new f line field. Um, so, and then, now that I have these counts of things, I compare the counts and say, hey, if the, the counts of how many commas there were is greater than the tab count, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to um, go ahead and use, store the, um, the header field in this trans, right, and um, replace the comma with this, with line breaks. Um, and so this is where it's actually, re um, boy, is it replacing them again? That doesn't make sense. I would have thought it would have did it up here. Um, but anyway, the, um, and then if the comma count is less than the tab count, of course it could be equal, but it's rare. But, um, you know, it is the header row, so we assume that the headers are actually going to be the ones that have, you know, the, whatever's the most of, that's going to be what the type of delimiter it is, because it's the header row. Um, and then it'll store this, and in here we're storing the delimiter saying, okay, let's make this delimiter variable, say it's a tab delimited file, right? And that's the same thing up here. It's just, if it's if it's the comma, let's store the delimiter as a comma delimited file. And then, this is where um, I played with this a little bit to get it to use the file object. So I, this is the file object, which is in incredibly faster, and I think the, the biggest reason why is that the file object opens the file once and iterates through it, and then um, I have it close it here at the end. But the a file append and, and file line read and this and that, open them, often open them multiple times, and for those large files, you, you either, or you open the entire thing and it reads it into memory, which will cause issues, um, or it has to iterate over each one, opening and closing the file each time. This is how I got around that. And um, so this, this to me is weird, but it, um, you need this to iterate over each line, and so this will iterate each time it goes through the loop, it's going to increase the line um, to the next line. And I always want to pass a parameter here, like a number, but it, it just, you need to pass it like this, and it will automatically see the next line. And here, I just, this is where I'm saying start counting the number of rows, um, and, and here I wanted, because I'm used to the loop thing, I wanted to put an A index value, but I realized, hey, you know what, I'm just going to say rows, and this says rows plus one. And so it starts iterating off o over them, and this one here is saying, hey, if, if you're at the end of the file, right, then break. So if file um, dot ATEOF for end of file is true, so in auto hotkey you can do it this way, or you could say equals one, right? And I, I think if I do it that way, I have to have this in here. But once you get used to looking at it, um, you can just do it this way and say, if it's zero, this won't um, trigger. But once it's one, then it's true, and it'll break the loop. And then once the loop's done, I just close the file, um, and then this is a regular expression that um, basically makes your uh, your value, it inserts commas at the right place, um, and so I just store it rows and rows, right, but it's, it adds in the commas, um, and then I present it in the message box, and this 4 is the one that has the option of yes or no, and here I'm I'm putting the title up in the, the delimiter up in the title, so it'll tell you what type of delimiter it was. Then the number, of, this is the variable rows, right, for how many rows, and, it's, and here I put in some text, if lines is found, to the path of the file, and then it's, I ask the text, do you want to display headers, 
All right, so I don't say, do you want to display, but display headers, question mark. If you say yes, then it now it'll first store the uh, the the transformed um, transposed sorry uh, headers to the clipboard and then put them up in a message box. Um, and here, actually, this and this this is a nice little function I use. Let's say I was doing something, and I, this is a good example of. Let's say I was uh, doing stuff out of sight, and I had a lot of stuff um, that I wanted to look at. So I can come in here, and what it's going to do is it's instead of putting it in a message box, it's going to put it in this window here. So if I come back, and this is the wrong folder. So I'm going to save, reload, let's do this one. Display headers, yes. Now notice it didn't show it here. However, my site window, it dumped them in here. Right, so um, this is a little function I wrote that allows you to, instead of putting things in a message box, to dump it to here. Because sometimes um, I don't want to do a file append, but a GUI, it, you know, the message box don't look right, and um, sometimes it's nice having it here or if uh, we'll do the vertical break so you can see them and and I figured you know what why not have a function that allows me to use this output window because it can it for some things it's, it's the right tool for the job right so I can come in here um, but that's it and and obviously this in in this part you don't actually need um, let me just demonstrate here so get rid of that put that back in there so this is more of how I think the vast majority of people would be using this um, and yeah, it's uh, it's very handy and to me, incredibly fast. Like I said, if I come back here to this thing that has uh, what was it, nine million rows, so it's running right now. It um, oh, sorry, no one, oh, that was the large and wide. Sorry, okay, so the very tall, this one, it, the file size threw me because this one isn't nearly as wide, but it has a lot more rows. And so if you constantly work with large files, it's a very handy thing that you don't actually have to open it. So here's, it's over 9 million rows. It tells me it's tab delimited, allows me to see the headers if I want, without at least an explorer opening it. I could drag it in here. You want to open yes, and let's see if site, oh, oh good, site didn't crash. I think this other file, when I open it, yeah, so memory exhausted, right, site, site can't handle, um, a gig file, at least on my version right now. Anyway, hope that helps. Thanks.